And I just wanted to go through an example of how to use this pneumograph, which is basically Manning's equation solve for a circular pipe. This pneumograph is what is in the FE exam resource booklet. So it's, it's a little complicated because there's a lot of different lines with different meanings. So I just wanted to go over a problem with you guys on this one. So what we got here is a bunch of different curves and each curve represents some value, either Q over QF, velocity over velocity F, where F is the full pipe, um, hydraulic radius over hydraulic radius F. And essentially what we're, the kind of problems you're interested in is you say, okay, maybe I know a relative depth that I need to design to. In this case, um, we'll say the relative depth is 80%. So the, the depth relative to the diameter is d, small d or depth over diameter is 0.8. That's typically something we design for because we don't want the pipes to fill up during a flow event because when they fill up and you get pressurized flow, you get surcharge and then um, you know, manhole covers start flying off because you get pressure in the system. So we don't want that. Um, so here's just a kind of a FE type question you might get. A storm sewer must be designed to convey a peak discharge of eight CFS. Uh oh, let me make that 10 CFS. I solved it for 10. And I'll post this to if, um, if, I, if I get too fast for y'all. Um, so peak discharge of 10 CFS. So you did a hydrologic study. We'll learn that in hydrology to, to find out what's the peak discharge that's going to run off from this subdivision or this um, this drainage and we have to design a culvert to go under a road or something like that. All right, so we want to design the pipe so that's 80% full, um, depth over diameter is equal to 0.8. And we know the slope, this is something we can measure. We know that the upstream end of, you know, the inlet from the storm sewer is this elevation. We know that the storm sewer outlets over here. Um, so you know the slope of the system. So the slope is 0.01 feet per feet. So what's the required diameter for this, for this pipe? Um, we'll assume that N is constant, so N doesn't change as the depth increases. Um, why might N change with depth, Michael? If we increase the depth, why might our N value change? And N would be, what would N be exactly? It's your... So from the Manning's equation, The Manning's equation. Oh, from the N over N? Okay. Yeah, so the Manning's equation, and I can write that out. So Manning's equation, we could just say like Q is equal to A times that constant over N, um, hydraulic radius to the two thirds, slope to the one half. That's our Manning's equation. So the N is the roughness factor. It's kind of like our oh, okay. friction factor. So as that increases then the Q uh, will increase. So no. for a larger N value, we have a higher roughness. And so a larger N value would re result in a, a lower discharge. Lower Q. Yeah, for a given depth or something like that. Um, so the idea here is, and, and you can think of it just as F. F typically goes down um, for like a, a bigger diameter pipe or something like that. And it's just that there's less flow in contact um, with the, with the surface area of the pipe. So as um, depth increases, you kind of have more flow in the middle and less kind of roughness potentially. And so um, the, the Manning's end can actually change um, to a certain extent. So you can see this curve right here. So Manning's end as a function of relative depth, it actually maximizes somewhere around um, like two to five. five. Yeah. And then it goes back down. And you can imagine as the pipe fills up, you start to get more stuff in contact up here. So we, we're typically, you know, just treat it as a constant, but know that it, it can actually change just like the friction factor can change. Okay, so for concrete, we can go to our table, find N is equal to 0.013. That's kind of a typical value, maybe down to 0.011. Um, 
So we start with something we know, and that's the relative depth is 0.8. So we need to find, because everything's normalized by the, the full value, we need to find Q over QF. So we can go up here to our um, runoff depth ratio, that's 0.8. We can come across until we hit Q, and here it's um, Manning's end doesn't change with depth. So it's this dashed, this dotted line right here. So we come down, we find out that Q over QF is actually equal to one. So it's the same discharge as we would get at point eight as we would get if the pipe were full. Okay, so that's another reason why we designed pipes to be uh, carry the peak discharge at point eight depth. Okay, so Q over QF is equal to one. That's, that's good to know. Um, let's just go and solve the Manning's equation for QF. And the, and the reason why, the whole reason why we're using this nomograph is because it's hard to calculate the hydraulic radius um, the area and all these things um, when we have a partial, partially full pipe, filled pipe, because it's always, it's this weird function of theta angle of the flow relative to the center, all these weird things. Um, so there's a, a number of different ways we could solve this because we have different curves for hydraulic radius and area, but really um, because Q over QF equals one, we can just solve for QF um, and then we know that QF is the same as, as Q. Okay, so QF is going to be equal to the Manning's equation. Um, and so that's this coefficient, because we're dealing with phi, that coefficient is equal to 1.49 times the area at full divided by N, the hydraulic radius at full, and then the slope um, raised to the power of two thirds and one half. Okay, now. Area is going to be a function of diameter, right? So area is going to be uh, pi d over four, pi d squared over four. And then hydraulic radius is actually, so that's this right here, pi d squared over four. Hydraulic radius is actually area divided by wetted perimeter. And when the pipe is full, the wetted perimeter is the circumference of the pipe, which is just um, uh, pi d. So we divide the area by the circumference of the pipe we get d over four for the hydraulic radius, um, which is equal to a over the wetted perimeter. So if you plug all those in here, we end up with this thing. So um, pi over four, d to the eight thirds. That's when you um, put the hydraulic radius in here and the, the diameter in here. Um, so this is what the equation looks like in terms of diameter. And that's just equal to our design flow of 10 CFS. So now we can solve for D. And because we know QF is equal to Q, if we were somewhere else on that curve, you could, you could very easily solve for um, QF if you know what your, your Q is supposed to be. Um, and then we can just plug that in and get our diameter. So a diameter ends up being about 0.7 feet. Um, and then because you can't find a pipe necessarily that's 0.7 feet in diameter, um, you usually round up to the nearest two inches. So in this case, we'll do a 10 inch diameter pipe. So we did a bunch of algebra to start at D over D equals 0.8. We found that our Q over QF is equal to one. And so, we can use the Manning's equation in terms of D, because D is our unknown, and D comes in our area term and our hydraulic radius term. We can solve for D and then plug in all the knowns that we have. So if Q over QF wasn't equal to one, in this case, we could simply say, okay, well, Q over QF is equal to 0.7 or something like that. Um, then we could just say, you know, Q, Q over QF, there, let me write it here. If Q over QF equal to 0.7, then we could simply say Q is equal to 0 0.7 QF. And then that's what we would plug. That's what we would plug into here. So now we were able to solve for D as a function of Q using these curves.
and we didn't have to get into the complex trigonometry that's involved in um, circular pipe areas and hydraulic radii. So I'll post this just so you guys have it. 